Hi guys, Oliver at Delta XML here. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to evaluate our software using XML Compare as an example. There are timestamps in the description listing the topics we're going to be covering today, which includes everything from downloading the product to your first comparison and beyond. First up, let's look at prerequisites. To get started, you'll need a working version of Java on your machine, a Windows, Linux or Mac operating system, and an internet connection. Once you've gotten in contact using one of the email addresses on screen now, or filled out a form on our website, I'll set up your evaluation for you. From there, you'll need to create an account on MyDelta. MyDelta is Delta XML's self-service licensing and downloads portal. It's here that you'll find everything you need to evaluate. To sign up for free, go to the MyDelta website. Then, click the sign up button and create an account using your work email address. A few minutes later, you'll receive a verification email. Once you've verified your email address, you'll be able to log into MyDelta and see all of your licenses and downloads. It's worth checking your junk folder in case the verification email has gotten lost. If after a few minutes the email hasn't arrived though, please contact support and we'll sort it out for you. When you log into MyDelta, you'll see this screen. You can see on the left there's a list of different areas. First, let's go to your downloads section. Here you'll be able to see all of the products that you have access to, as well as all the associated tools and license servers. Let's start by downloading the product, and you'll also need to download the license server files. Today I'll be using Windows as an example. While those are downloading, let's activate your license. First, click on the License Manager button on the left hand bar. From the License Manager, you can view, activate, return, download, and see the history of all of your licenses. Each line item shows the product, line item usage type, and the quantity of licenses available. If you haven't already, you'll need to create a system for the line item. This system represents the number of concurrent operations assigned to a license. Click the Create System button, and for evaluators, just type 2 or 1 in this box. It's worth noting that Delta XML concurrent operation licenses allow any number of users, machines, or processes access the product. And this is all handled by the license server that you install on your own infrastructure. Once you've created a system, click the Activate button. It's possible to activate Delta XML licenses with three server redundancy. This means that if one of your license servers goes down, there will be no interruption in service, as the service will move to a redundant server. For now though, let's just stick to a normal setup. Next, pick a host ID type. The types available are IP address, MAC address, or host name. For evaluators, I recommend host name as it's the most straightforward, and it can easily be accessed through the command prompt by using the host name command. Go ahead and type in your host name. Then, click the box to accept the terms and conditions, and click confirm. With that, your license is now active and ready for download. Next, click the download button. Let's quickly open the license file with a text editor to do a quick sanity check. You can see here the date of issue and the expiry date. OK, next you'll need to extract the license server files and the product files into an appropriate folder. Ideally this should be under your C drive in a location like Program Files. The reason being that sometimes user directories can have permission restrictions that prevent the license server from functioning. You can see here that I've created a Delta XML folder under the C drive. Next up we'll need to make two copies of the license file. Put the first copy in the product folder, alongside the command jar file. This license file will allow the product to run and to find the license server. Be careful not to rename the license file, as doing so could prevent the product from finding it. The second copy of the license file needs to go into the bin directory inside the license server folder. This copy of the license is what the license server will use as a reference. Now that the license files are in place, it's time to set up the license server. First, navigate to the bin folder, underneath the license server folder. In this folder you'll find a collection of vendor daemon files. Essentially, these are what make the license server work. For now though, we're only interested in one of them, lmtools.exe. This stands for License Manager Tools. Go ahead and double click on it to run it. It's helpful to do this with administrator permissions, if possible. OK, let's go to the Config Services tab. From here we're going to configure the license server service. 
you can name the service by replacing the contents of this box. Just go ahead and highlight it and start typing. Next, we need to identify where the lmgrd file is. If you click the Browse button and go to the Bin folder, you'll see that it's sixth from the top. Next, we need to give the license server a license file to refer to. Again, click the Browse button and select the relevant license file that we put in the Bin folder earlier. Alternatively, you can use the license file in the Product folder. However, when setting up your license server, it's generally better to keep the two separate, as this allows for more precise configuration. We won't get into that today though. You can also choose a custom location for the log file if needed. Next, tick the checkbox that says Use Services. And finally, click Save Service. Now that the license server has been configured, we can start it. First, click on the Start, Stop, Reread tab, which is around the middle of the top bar of tabs. If you already have a Flexera service running, you can tick the Force Server Shutdown box and click Stop Server to end the service. This will give us a fresh starting point to start the new service. In this case, you can see it says Unable to Stop Server. This is because there wasn't one running, which is a good sign. Next, click the Start Server button. And just like that, the license server is up and running. Next, we can verify that the server is working properly. First, click on the Server Status tab. Then, click on the Perform Status Inquiry button. This might take a few seconds to complete, but when it does, scroll to the bottom of the readout and you'll see how many licenses are available and how many are in use. You can see here that none are in use yet, as we haven't started the product. And on that note, we're ready to start using XML Compare. The first thing we need to do now is navigate to the XML Compare product folder. You'll see a collection of folders, and also a collection of Java files, .jar. To use these, we'll need to run them from the command line. You can do this by clicking in the navigation bar in your Windows Explorer, and typing cmd, then pressing enter. This will open cmd in the correct directory, so you won't have to navigate again via the command line. Before going ahead any further, we should ensure that you've got a working version of Java installed. You can do this from the command prompt using the command on screen now. Java space dash version. If you don't have a working version of Java installed, don't worry. You can easily download and install it from the Java website. Next, we can start the product. You can do this by running the command jar file using the command on screen now. Note, however, that the version of the command file may have changed depending on the version of the product you've downloaded. Running this command will show you a full set of usage instructions for the product. If you navigate to the product folder in your Windows Explorer, you'll see that we've got a samples folder. We've included a selection of sample files in this folder for you to test on. These XML files detail animals, and we're going to use them in our first comparison command. So, let's start building our first comparison command using the format displayed by the command jar file. The command is as follows. First, we need the command jar file as before. Then, we give it the instruction compare. Then choose the configuration ID, in this case delta, followed by our two inputs in the samples folder. And finally we define our result file. And just like that, in a matter of seconds, you've produced your first result XML file. Let's take a look at the file now. I'm going to use the Oxygen XML editor as it's very convenient for looking at XML files. For reference, I've opened two of the sample files and the result file. You can see as I move between the two sample files that there are differences, both in elements and in attributes. As I move to the result file, this is where our delta v2 format comes in. It follows this simple a equals b format, or if the files are different, a does not equal b. A indicates that something was present in the first file, B indicates that it was present in the second file, and the equals or do not equals symbols indicate whether there was change between the two files. Because this output is valid XML, it means it's readily processable by third-party systems. And as you scroll through the result file, you'll note that changes to structure and content have been picked up. This is the unique strength of XML Compare. Nothing else on the market can provide structural awareness of this kind. And with extensive configuration options, you can account for all sorts of edge cases. 
On that note, let's explore some of the configuration and processing options that are available. One of the sample pipelines that we include in the product are our side-by-side -side comparison reports. This pipeline produces a HTML output that highlights changes in green and red, which is very convenient, especially for non-technical users. Let's go ahead and create one now using the following command. Note that we change the pipeline configuration ID when we write the comparison command. It's also worth noting that the result file is of type .html this time, not .xml. And just like that, we've produced our side-by-side -side comparison report. Go ahead and open it in a web browser to see the results. And as promised, here are our change bars. Green indicates additions, and red indicates deletions. And with further configuration, it's also possible to identify moves. OK, let's do another comparison, but this time we'll use the doc diff report configuration. This pipeline is similar to the side-by-side -side comparison, in that it uses a HTML output. But this one shows the change bars in line. This output type is particularly popular in the publishing industry, but has other applications as well. Let's run the comparison using the following command. One of our customers, ISO, actually used this live on one of their websites, highlighting the changes between versions of their standards. And again, this pipeline can be further configured to meet your own requirements. So, congratulations! You've now successfully used XML Compare and know how to perform comparisons and how to configure using different configuration pipelines. So, let's wrap up with a few helpful resources. First of all, Delta XML provides extensive documentation on all of our products. The configuration we displayed today was just a fraction of what's possible. And if you go to our samples and guides section in the documentation website, you'll see exactly what I mean. There are tons of resources for you to work with, and many of them come with samples that are ready for download and use immediately. There are too many for me to list off now, but a few notable examples include ignoring expected changes, MathML handling, handling white space, handling tables, and outputting results in tracked changes formats. It's also worth noting that we've got a collection of free tools that are really useful, including an adapter for the Oxygen XML editor. We've actually done a video on this adapter, and you can find a link to it in the description. Finally, for those of you working with Amazon Web Services, we offer an Amazon Machine Image, or AMI, which is a pre-configured machine that contains the product and license server. Using this, you can easily get comparing quickly by simply setting up an evaluation and including the license file. You can access the AMI on the Amazon Marketplace. There's also a link to it on our documentation site. Don't forget to like the video and click the subscribe button to get updates on our new products, features, and tutorials. You can also click the notification bell so that you're notified whenever we upload something new. This is Oliver at Delta XML signing off. Looking forward to hearing from you.